The second thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, uh, grats and gruts. And uh, these are uh, some estate planning uh, tools that are out there. And <clears throat> grats and gruts are set up uh, during your lifetime. And they're basically irrevocable trusts. So once you set them up, you can't make any changes to them. You uh, basically want to transfer assets that appreciate and in, in, that you expect to appreciate. They have the potential for high appreciation um, that generate income. You can set up a grat or a grut for a period of years. So there's a, there's a term to it. And, the main, and we'll go into this in a little more detail. But the main objective is obviously to reduce your estate taxes. And at the end of whatever term you pick, the assets pass to the beneficiary. And so it's, it's basically a current gift of a, of, a, of a future interest. Now, the difference between a grad and a grut, uh, um, they're called grantor retained interest trusts. And so a grad is a grantor retained annuity trust, which basically means that the grantor, whoever puts the assets in the trust, is entitled to an annuity payment. And a grut is a grantor retained unit trust which basically is the, the grantor is entitled to a fixed percentage of the principal payment each year. Um, we see a lot more of grats than anything else. Um, and so a grat can be anywhere from two years. And uh, there's, well, it's been debatable whether you can actually have a one-year grat, but typically we see them two years or more. There's been some rules. There's been some proposed legislation out there to limit them to 10 years. Um, because, and so what you want to do is, I mean, the, the reason that they work is that there's two principles. One is, is that um, the gift taxes are based on the value at the date, which is discounted for the cost of the delay. So if I set up a 10-year grat and my beneficiary is not going to get the assets in that grat for 10 years, then the value of that is less than, than what it would be if I, had, I gave 100% of it away today. So it allows you to give more of an asset away. Um, and, and so you get the discount. And then if, if the person, the grantor who sets up the trust actually outlives the term, so if it's a 10-year grant, if you outlive the terms of the grant, then it's completely out of your estate. All of the assets that are left in there, as well as any future appreciation, is, uh, is completely out of your estate. So we see a lot of, they call it, sometimes we see rolling grants, which are two-year grats, so I might set up a grat for two years and then set up another grat for another two years and then another two years, and they kind of roll out. Um, and what you're trying to do is you, you, know, you want appreciated assets because a grat doesn't work if your assets don't appreciate, and you want the appreciation to be greater than your annuity payment. And so um, a failed grat is one where it doesn't appreciate, and you end up with less assets than you expected at the end. And so we see them for two years, five years, 10 years. I think um, because of the market volatility and the low interest rates that we've had, we've seen a lot of two-year grats. Um, I, the government is looking at these, and I, some of the proposals is that you won't be able to have a grat for less than 10 years. And if that passes, um, it, it might not be as beneficial. Uh, you have to really look at it. Some people view these as a no-win situation, right? Because uh, I'm sorry, they, as a win, it's well, it's a no-lose situation, not a no-win. <laughs> <laughs> I got the wrong terminology there. Some people look at it as a no-lose situation, right? If I, if I give it away and I get my annuity payment, the asset appreciates, and at the end of my term, let's say it's a five-term year grat, I outlive the term, my beneficiaries get any assets remaining in there plus any of the appreciation for the five years. If I die during the term, uh, within the five years, it all goes back into my estate. So, you know, if I outlive it, it's out of my estate. If I don't outlive it, it's as if I did nothing. So it's really almost like a no-lose situation. I mean, I'm in no worse shape if I die during the term. I'm in a much better state if I, if I survive the term. Um, now, s some of the reasons you would, uh, you know, who would use a grat if you're single and you have a substantial estate? You might consider using a grat because you don't get the unlimited marital deduction. So it might be a way for you to get some assets out of your estate. Wealthy widows or widower, widowers, divorced individuals. Um, if you have married couples in excess of $10.5 million in assets, um, if, there's a, if you have substantial assets and there's a high probability that you'll outlive the term of the grant, it's a, it's a good way to get out of your estate. Um, 
Interest rates are low at the moment. They've been low for the last few years, so we've seen a lot of GRATs. Um, and like I mentioned before, for a uh, GRAT to be successful, it has to outperform the rate of interest that you have to charge by the government in valuing the gift. So, you know, since the rates are low um, and performance has been, I guess, pretty good over the last few years, <coughs> not sure why, but it, the market keeps going up. Uh, and so, um, GRATs have worked out pretty well. I'm not going to talk about qualified personal residence trusts. I don't know if anybody's heard of those, but you can give away your, um, your house, your shore property um, in a trust. It has the same type of thing. You can take significant discounts depending on the term. Um, at the end of the term, you can rent the property, which gets more assets out of your estate. Um, so it's just something. If you have a shore property and you're thinking of a way of getting that out of your estate, they're called uh, QPERTs. Um, like I said before, you want to use assets that are, uh, have the potential to substantially appreciate. You, uh, you can use stock in uh, closely held businesses, but you have to be concerned about the valuation and using the right valuation. Um, you have to be concerned about the control of the stock after the GRAT, you know, because once the GRAT expires, the term ends and it's the end of the 10 years, who's going to get, who's, who now is the beneficiary of the GRAT? You have to be concerned about how that's going to be controlled and who's going to control the stock at that point. Um, and then if the GRAT fails, meaning that it didn't earn enough to pay your annuity payment, you might have to transfer some of the stock back as payment of the annuity. So you've got to be a little bit careful with, uh, with um, using a closely held stock with GRATs. <coughs>